welcome to our webinar on cultural awareness and uh, how to increase your global performance. I would like, uh, first of all, to introduce the, uh, the objective of our webinar, and then I will present our speakers. So the objective of our webinar is to help you gain insights and share with you uh, some cases on the importance of cultural awareness uh, and uh, discover effective tools and understand better cultural differences. So the key points of our webinars are first, how to avoid common mistakes and learn from other companies uh, about the mistakes due to cultural differences, how to apply efficient cultural tools to help drive performance and hear from companies uh, on how to succeed in diverse uh, markets. As well, we would like to present you some solutions and tools to help you with your global strategy in your decision making. So our webinar, we hope that our webinar will uh, bring you more information on the culture factor, on cross-cultural dimensions, on how to do your global management successfully and on uh, bring you more cultural awareness. Um, I think um, on your, on your, on your uh, side, you can uh, type for us some messages, ask uh, questions, and we will try and answer them uh, during the webinar or later on. So let's uh, introduce to you our three speakers, um, Egbert Schramm, myself, Tatiana Miron, and Laura Druitt. So I'll start with myself, just to uh, explain why are we here and why we think we can talk to you about the cultural awareness. So myself, I have an MBA in global management in France, USA, and China. Uh, I'm a global strategy consultant and CEO of a startup in France, which is called Prime Target. My areas of expertise are business and corporate strategy, international strategies. I specialize in SMEs in their international development and international market selection. So I, my mother was, is Moldovan and my father Russian, and I live in France and I've lived in several countries um, previously. Okay, Egbert, this is close to you. So good afternoon, everybody. Assuming everybody is dialing in from Europe. If not, good evening or good morning. Uh, my name is Egbert Schram. I'm the group CEO at Hofstede Insights, uh, Global Cultural Advisory. My background is slightly different. Uh, my background is actually that I'm a forester. That's why I chose to live in Finland. It's a bit more trees here than in my native country of the Netherlands. Uh, when we talk about culture, uh, culture is basically one of my expertise areas um, and specifically the data-driven approach to culture. And that's what I'll share a little bit more about with you later on in today's webinar. Thank you, Egbert. Uh, excellent. So, um, a bit of uh, background about Prime Target at Hofstede and why we decided to organize this event today. Prime Target is helping uh, companies uh, develop internationally and help them decide on which market to develop internationally. And we have partnered with Hofstede because we apply in our decision-making tool, um, cultural data. Thank you uh, for Hofstede Insights for, for accepting, working with us. And we are doing this webinar in order to bring uh, use some data, information, and share our value with you. These kind of cases bring us to to learn, to the need to learn about more about uh, cultural needs and cultural differences and how to adapt and how, how to adapt ourselves when we go abroad. Let's hear from Egbert. Thank you, Tatiana. So switching into a new layout, um, you've already had a bit of an introduction to who I am. So I'll tell you a little bit more about who uh, I work with and for. Um, as Hofstede Insights, we've been in the market since roughly give or take 1985. Uh, we had a bit of a brand redesign two years ago, but uh, uh, practically we've been making the culture factor tangible since 1985. Now, why do we do this? Because as Tatiana already indicated, culture is a word that has many different meanings. And in our meaning, why culture is important is because in a lot of cases, 
Uh, just think about current date news topics, our survival as mankind at a global level, but also in terms of a company level is dependent on making people that think differently work together, which is very difficult if you interpret the same word in a different way. So data helps to have a more objective discussion on a topic such as culture. Globally, we're about 130 people and currently in active in 60 countries. So as such, fairly international as an organization. Um, there are four distinct areas and uh, these four areas we work in are all taking a different look at the topic of culture. The first angle is the angle of organizational culture. The case study described by Tatiana of Omnicom and Publicis was a culture class on multiple layers, nationally, French-American, but also organizationally, one advertising company and another advertising company. Often companies claim to have a certain culture, but have they really measured it? So this is one area where we work in. The second area is related to intercultural management. How do different nations, countries, program the human mind in different ways. And this starts already at a very young age. Just think back to the time you were in school. Were you allowed to speak up to your teacher? In some countries amongst the audience present, I would estimate the answer would be definitely not because there would be negative consequences to such behavior. In the country where I grew up, in the Netherlands, if you would not speak up to your teacher, your parents would be invited for a discussion because you would have a problem. The problem being you did not show any initiative. Now imagine that example and that being reinforced by consecutive teachers and your parents don't oppose the power holder, don't speak up. And now you start working for a Western company that would es estimate you to take the initiative. You can already understand that this is not going to work. The third angle that I'm going to share a little bit of an insight about with you today is related to consumers. So we have life within a company or an organization, but we also have life as a consumer. Now, what does that mean? for how we consume marketing, how we consume and interpret products. So these are three main areas that I'll talk about a little bit today. The fourth area is an area where we conduct research in the area of, for example, cultural values. And these are typically research projects that we do for governments to understand how do social programs impact value building in a societal level. So let's talk a little bit about the type of clients that use this kind of cultural know-how. As you can see from the slide in front of you, culture touches every single industry. It doesn't matter whether you work in finance, in production, in marketing, every single market vertical or industry is touched by culture, but obviously in different ways. If we talk about culture, our advice would typically be you should ignore it because it is a difficult topic. And if you can't take the time to understand a difficult topic, you should not engage with it. But the reality is you can't because culture is all around. It's in the colors we use when we make a product presentation. It is in the structure of the presentations we use. It is in the structure of our sales pitches. Do we start with a big ID? work towards a solution? Or do we start with the solution and then explain the big idea? All of this is impacted by cultural programming. So the fact that you can't ignore culture would typically lead to the conclusion that you should understand where, how, and when culture impacts your business. Because being proactive in this understanding will typically save you an enormous amount of money and time. The examples that China gave earlier and examples like Tesco and its failure in the US are not failures that measure a couple of thousand euros. These are failures that run into multiple million slash billion dollars or euros. So cultural ignorance can be rather expensive. Now, if we talk about the first lesson, and I'll share three lessons today. So this is number one of three. You look at the world throughout your own lenses. No matter where you look, you will always look through your own eyes. And let's do a little exercise about that. What do you see? 
I'll just give you a few seconds to form an opinion. And then I'll ask you the question, do you see a frog or do you see a horse? If you see the frog, I'll invite you to tilt your head sideways. And now you should see the horse. Yeah. So simple mental biological trick I played with you. But what is the consequence of this, for example, for product design? What do you see? Obviously, for those of you that are um, a little bit older in age, um, you will see a Walkman, this revolutionized personal music consumption. But what is the meaning of the Walkman? For Japanese clients, the meaning of the Walkman was the ability to listen to music without disturbing the wider environment. For American consumers, the meaning of the Walkman was the ability to pick and make your own music. Now, this existential difference between seeing the same object but having a different interpretation is at the core of understanding which words to use to pitch your product, to build your product, to make your marketing. And there is a certain logic to this. And this logic is based on the work conducted by the person who uh, helped us to get founded in 1985, Professor Hofstede. Now, although his research resonates or originates from the late 60s, early 70s, the work he has made public has been repeated numerous times and is the most quoted piece of social psychological research out there. It is still social psychological research, so it is not like the law of gravity. But when it comes to psychology, sociology, social psychology, it is the most validated piece of research out there. And what we do with this is help companies, clients, people understand that every country has six, six basic dilemmas. How do we deal with hierarchy? How do we deal with our relationship to the group? Do we have an extended responsibility morally or do we only have that responsibility towards a little in-group? How do we relate to what motivates us? Is that performance? Is that success? Just think about the difference between a Volvo and a Porsche. And I think you can make the mental connection. Now, look at pictures of Volvo of 2019 and 2010. What happened in between Volvo, an originally Swedish company, was purchased by Geely, a Chinese company. And the entire exterior design of Volvo became much more aggressive. This is the impact of culture on design. Why? Because in China, assertiveness, success factors, sells better than topics traditionally more Nordic in nature. Take your whole family with you in a nice big car with space for the whole family. Yeah. Another dilemma is related to how do we structure? Do we need lots of detail in the way we structure so that we can anticipate that what we don't know or not? And so on. So six dilemmas that will help us to understand the core programming of any particular nation. That will help us to make better program and marketing design and organizational practices. You can bring this down to the personal level. And for that, we have developed a set of tools that will help you to visualize what are your personal cultural preferences. So what are these glasses you have in front of you? And what might they lead to when you interact with people from selected other countries in specific roles? Because when your role is that of a superior, you'll have a different context and different expectations than when you are just a colleague or a salesperson. So bringing culture down to the personal level is a first step to making it more tangible. There is a second lesson. The second lesson, especially valid for SMEs, whether they're European or not, doesn't really matter. But it is that in a lot of funding programs, the EU as such has found out that there are two reasons why SMEs fail. One is a lack of capital, and unfortunately, we cannot help with that. The second is a lack of cultural awareness. And for that purpose, the EU has provided a huge amount of funding. And based, with, based on that funding, we have built what we call Cube In. It is a learning platform which stands for cultural understanding for business expansion and innovation. You can find more information uh, about this platform on the website link you see in front of you, cubein.eu. And that 
platform has a huge amount of wealth in terms of knowledge that you can use to get a top level understanding on at this point a selected number of developing countries and this project is currently still running so it's an easy way for you as an SME to get started there's a third lesson and that third lesson is about how can you as a company use cultural know-how on a granular level meaning segmented level when you pitch a product when you market it and this is based on a huge research we did in 2015 2017 with the world's largest consumer advertising organization and has led to what we call consumer culture intelligence basically a database that will help you to globalize intelligently in terms of marketing Basically, what we state there, based on that research, is that the global village is a myth. It does not, ex it does not exist. And you can see this in practice with much more nationalism on the rise. People become more French than French. They become more Dutch than Dutch, or they become more Chinese than Chinese because of all the uncertainty in the world. What you can see is that because of an increase in immigration, is that you have many more segments in each population that react differently to the way you position your product. Now, what this therefore enables you to do, this CCI database, is to pinpoint what are the triggers that I need to push emotionally to get buy-in? What are the channels I need to use to attract people? Is, for example, LinkedIn a good sales channel or should I go with the local sports club newspaper? Who do I let recommend my product? Is that a celebrity or is that somebody that actually has a certain amount of expertise? How much information do I put in my marketing? A little bit, multiple times, or a lot only once? All of this is knowledge you can use to make much better uh, marketing impact. Now, why is this important? Because especially as an SME, what is the market that you're gonna go to? Now, the nice thing about Prime Target's database and service is that you're able to get a lot of insight on each country specifically. The question for you as an SME is, do you have the resources to create specific marketing campaigns for specific countries? And for that purpose, what we enable you to do is to select market clusters. In other words, a group of countries and segments within that country that will respond simultaneously and similarly as other countries. And doing this will help you to become much more efficient in globalizing your marketing activities. So instead of having one campaign per country, you could combine several companies and several countries uh, while still minimizing the actual investment. That is what I had to share with you. And with that being said, I'm going to give the word back to Tatiana uh, with one final statement. And that is that if you want to know more about this, I warmly welcome you to join us in our conference in Luxembourg on November 15th, which is about the culture factor and how you use cultural intelligence to drive your business. Thank you. And back to you, Tatiana. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Egbert. Okay, I'm going to try and pull our presentation back. Um, there you go. Oh, so that we can continue. Um, we will pick up where we were. If not, I think we have come uh, to the end of our webinar. I would like to thank once again all of the attendees, first of all. Uh, thank you for your interest. You'll receive an email from ourselves with the presentation and as well with a uh, um, link to the video. Uh, I would like uh, to thank once again Egbert. Thank you, Egbert and Hofstede Insights. Good morning. Welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Laura. Laura Druid, thank you pleasure. very much for coming. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would like to say uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you. And... Um, uh, good luck with your international development and let's hear from you good news. Looking forward to staying in touch with everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a good Bye. afternoon or morning, depending on where you are. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>